Hey guys, it's David from Red Wagon Dioramas. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to give you a look at my Black Series Endor Bunker Diorama there on the shelf behind me. Now this diorama is part of my Black Series collection display. I've got a whole wall here of all my Black Series figures. And I have videos for most of these dioramas on my channel. And the ones that I don't have yet, I will be filming in the near future. So please check those out on the channel if you're interested in the rest of my display. All these dioramas are made by me through regular you know, crafting supplies, paint and plaster and foam and sculpting and gluing all this stuff together. So it's a lot of fun. If you're new to the channel and you like this stuff, I'd encourage you to subscribe. I've also got memberships available. So please check those out if you want to support me on the channel. All right, let's get into it. I'm afraid our furry companion has gone and done something rather rash. Uh, oh no. There goes our surprise attack. So the first thing to notice is the size of the diorama. This diorama is set up right in the middle of one of my five by five Ikea cube shelves. These are the Calax cube units that you can buy from Ikea. One of the first videos I posted on YouTube was actually how I knocked down the individual dividers and push them to the back so they could get wider display spaces. So check out that video on my channel too if you're interested in, you know, kind of how to modify the shelf here. This particular Endor diorama is set up right in the middle. So this is taking up three cubes and I wanted it that big because I had the bunker in mind and I wanted to be able to put like some of the speeder bikes in here and some of the other characters that were coming out for Return of the Jedi. I'll go over the figures first. Now these are all Hasbro Black Series figures. Over here on the left, I've got Wicket the Ewok, love that figure. I've got Leia and Han, and I've got Luke back there in the background, and I've got three of the Rebel Soldiers figures. So those are the guys coming in on the left. Front and center, I've got four Scout Trooper figures. Love these figures. You know, this is probably one of the best figures that came out in the original blue line, the Scout and the Speeder Bike. These figures are still great, even all these years later. The Scout Trooper, by the way, has been released several times. And there was a version of him released with cleaner boots, but I've got all these with the dirty boots from Endor here. I based this display on the scene when the scout troopers are all kind of milling around the entrance of the bunker, and they don't know that the rebels are there yet. Look, over there! Stop him! Not bad for a little fur ball. There's only one left. And right over here on the right, I've got... Paplu on one of the speeder bikes about to take off to be the distraction so the rebels can sneak into the bunker. And then I also put R2 and uh, 3PO over here on the right side. I have decided that we shall stay here. Now that shiny 3PO there is the model kit by Bandai. You can tell it's not Hasbro because it actually has a nice shiny vac metal finish on it. It's a great model kit to get if you, uh, if you don't have it yet. That is the brand new R2-D2 from Hasbro, the one with the pop-up head that stores all the accessories inside. Um, these speeder bikes were, are Hasbro as well. They might have come with the Scout Troopers, I don't remember. I also got the uh, Heroes of Endor set, which came with a speeder, so it might be one of those as well. Hey! Now the centerpiece of this diorama is of course the bunker itself. Now this bunker is 3D printed. It is the original bunker design that was released by Landspeeder Luke, man, probably three or four years ago. I know he's tweaked it and modified it a bit since then, but this is the original design I got from him from his Patreon early on. The main thing I did here with the print was that I upsized it about 20% or so because I wanted that door height to be a little bit higher than the way it was in Luke's original design. I just thought it was a little bit short the way it was scaled. And I believe he did that because of the size of his printing bed. But my friend Gary, who printed this for me, had a larger printing bed, so he was able to upscale the whole thing, and it worked out pretty good. Now, as far as cost, I think Gary charged me something around $120 or so to print this. He mailed it to me in pieces and then I glued it together and painted it. I did airbrush this with some grays and blacks. I used that green terrain debris that you can get for like train sets and stuff from Hobby Lobby. And I just spritzed some, uh, some watery Elmer's glue on it in a few areas and then sprinkled that stuff on there. So that's how I got kind of the mossy look at the bottom of the, uh, of the structure. You can see some more over here. With the airbrush, I kind of went with a darker 
gray and almost a brownish black mix to give some shading. And then I touched up with the green afterwards. Now on top of the bunker, I've got more of the green and I've also got a bunch of dead dry leaves, which, which is pretty close to what it looked like in the movie, I think. For lighting here, guys, I've got some strip lights from Ikea. I forget the name of these. I think they were called like Leadberg or something. They're discontinued now, but that's what I have on all these shelves for my Black Series collection. Now, as far as the structure of the diorama itself, it is sitting on a half inch thick foam board base. This is a polyiso foam board, but it's the higher density stuff they use. So it has a little bit more rigidity to it. But I wanted a foam base because I knew I wanted to stick the plants and the speeder bikes into it. So I need something that I could you know, pin into. So that's why I didn't use plywood, for example. The side walls are just foam board with a inkjet printed version of the forest. I got the backdrop image off Google and then I, you know, replicated it. I think there's, I think it's replicated two or three times here to make the backdrop of all the trees. I was looking for something sort of in scale with the six inch figures and, and with the, with the bunker, which is kind of hard to do sometimes when you're sourcing images. I also like this background image because it had the ferns in it which you see prominently in the scenes in the movie. For the forest ground here, this is all real ground up dry leaves and pine needles. Basically, I grabbed a bunch of dead leaves from my backyard and I just mashed them up into pieces until I got them really, really fine. And I mean, I had a whole bucket of this. I probably crumpled up, you know, like a five gallon bucket full of leaves just to get a couple of handfuls of the, of the debris. Why did you have to be so brave? Oh. Well, I suppose I got hardware this thing. So when I made the floor, I first painted the foam board black, and then I coated Mod Podge on here, and I sprinkled all this, uh, you know, dead leaves and pine needles and, and dirt on there to make the forest floor. It worked pretty good. I mean, some of this stuff is not adhered. I mean, it's it's loose. You can see it's it's actual dead leaves and stuff. And it's done okay. It's been sitting here on the shelf for a year or so, and I haven't had any problems with it. The fine green material, the moss color there, is more of that fine green sprinkled material that you can buy at, like, Hobby Lobby. They use it for railroad sets and that sort of thing. So that's sprinkled around the ground and onto the bunker itself. The other part of the diorama here are the ferns. It was actually hard to find ferns that were kind of in scale with the Black Series. Because when you go to the Hobby Lobby stores or Walmart or whatever, a lot of the ferns are a lot bigger. So when I found these, I grabbed a whole bunch of them because it was the only time I ever saw them for sale and I got them at Michael's. And when I got them, they were all frosted with this white kind of fuzz finish to them. Almost looked like a Christmassy fern. So I had to use rubbing alcohol to clear all the, uh, the white stuff off of them to get them back to the green color. And then I did find a second version of the ferns that I interspersed in here with the original one. So I have some, there's basically two sizes of ferns here. There's the bigger one there and then the littler one. And I've got a mixture of those on both the left and right side of the diorama. Get down here, she's wounded. No, wait. I got an idea. Now the speeder bikes are resting on acrylic rods there. So like a quarter inch acrylic rod that's just you know, pinned down into the into the foam board. You can see the ferns there are just set in some super glue and poked right into the foam board as well. So overall, it's pretty basic, guys. It's just, you know, doing the terrain on the ground, um, 3D printed bunker, painting that, getting a nice image for the backdrop, and then getting some ferns that fit in scale. All right, guys, so that's a look at my Endor bunker diorama for my Black Series collection. You know, it took me several years, honestly, to make this because I got the 3D printed bunker early but I didn't have the shelf set up and then I didn't have the ferns and then I just didn't have the motivation for a while until finally all those figures got released from Hasbro, all the rest of the Endor figures and the Ewoks. When the Ewoks came, that's when I got serious about doing the diorama. So again, for me, it's often the figures themselves that inspire the creativity for me to want to display them a little differently. And Return of the Jedi is my favorite movie, guys. I've said that over and over and I'm a, I'm a big fan of all the Endor stuff as well as Jabba and everything. So that's why this kind of has a centerpiece in my collection because I'm a big fan of Return of the Jedi. The Scout Troopers are some of my favorite figures in the whole line as far as Black Series goes. The bunker itself is just a really iconic scene. It's over, Commander. The Rebels have been routed. They're fleeing into the woods.
I haven't really tried setting up different figures with this yet, but I could certainly do a whole bunch of stormtroopers out here and do a big battle scene or something. I might do that in the future. It might be kind of fun to set it up a little differently. All right, guys, so thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing. If you want to support me on the channel, you know, become a member. Otherwise, just hit the like button for me if you enjoyed the video, and please consider sharing it as well. That really helps me out on the channel. Let me know in the comments what you think of this diorama, and let me know which one you'd like to see next. All right, guys, I'll catch you on the next one. May the force be with you. Bye.